This is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 22nd of July 2019 and I am 2J. I am 2 And I am DM. In case you missed it, this is the winning headlines and these are the day's headlines. How fake IDPs stole millions from state. Mm. The star. Senate in plot to ruin Uhuru legacy, MPs. And finally, the standard referendum push to test party loyalty. Mm. However, these headlines have actually been overtaken by events following the arrest of the Cabinet Secretary for Finance, Henry Rotich, and 27 others over the damn scandal. So we toss. We toss, toss them. Here at the Fifth Estate TV and the Fort Hall School of Government, we support the president's fight against corruption. However, we have reservations regarding the methods used in this fight. The intentions are spot on, but the approach is pedestrian at best. It is untaught in the craft of government, and here is why. One, arresting a finance minister, two PSs, and other top government officers was necessary. But the razzmatazz and the walhalla around it is unschooled. It lacks in thought and tact. Oh yeah, I agree. For instance, it is not lost on the public that 90% of those arrested are from one region. And saying that Mwizi ni Mwizi will not change the perception that this region is targeted. Mm. This is a lack of thought in our view. If there was someone in the Uhuru administration taught in the craft of government, they would have advised that the 25 be arrested in small installments, maybe in batches of five per day. This would have shifted the perception that one region is targeted. Two, we congratulate this year Kenoti for investigating with his mouth closed. He used to investigate with his mouth open, giving away important leads. Although there is some improvement, Kinoti told us some things about the dam scandal that remain unresolved. Yes, and one of those things is he told us that four billion was withdrawn from a Westland bank. Mm -hmm. Then it was taken to a house in the leafy suburbs. And the question in the mind of the public is this. Every bank has an account name, and the Westlands account has a name. The public would like to know this name. And the owner of this name should be arrested. Two, the house on the leafy suburb is built on land, and every land has an LR number. Yes. This number has a name. Again, the public would like to know this name. If Kinoti cannot resolve such puzzles, which he has created in the mind of the public, we will dismiss him as untaught. We must remind Kinoti that the public is unforgiving, especially to people that they call their heroes. And if Kinoti and Haji are our heroes, we want them to stop the dramas. Their operation must be as cold as a lizard. So guys, mm. is, do, do you guys think C.S. Rotich is the fall guy for William Ruto? Mm. I don't think he's so much a fall guy, mm. but this whole thing, the way it's playing out, yeah. it's to create a background of acceptance. Right. We'll see the arrests of cabinet secretaries, mm. but then we'll then see an escalation to the arrest of the deputy president. Oh, wow. Okay, but what exactly does the constitution say about the removal of the deputy president from his seat? And even before the removal of the deputy president, first mm. of all, we must say that the constitution does not protect the deputy president from legal from arrest, yeah. yes. proceedings. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is very express. Mm. But only the president is cannot be a case cannot be instituted against the deputy pres the president yes. while he is in a court of law. But the yes. deputy president is not protected. Yes. Yeah. But then now further down to I think Article One Fifty because that was one. Yeah, yeah, One Fifty. Yeah, to the removal about mm. legal proceedings. Mm. The removal of the president of the deputy president. Mm. I think this first or the second one states that mm. he can be removed if there is 
reason mm. for um, criminal. Mm -hmm. If there's if proof criminal, of criminal, proof, yeah. exactly, yeah. criminal yeah. activity yeah. that is either national, national or, or international. international. No. So that begs the question: yeah. Could that be a revival of a of a Hague proceeding? Could that be oh. a local one? I mean, there's many ways that this it could, it, could it will yeah, begin end up locally. Yeah. The so, question is this: uh, to MN Two J, uh, the government is a cash cow. Yeah. Mm. Are only Ruto and friends the ones with pails to milk this cow? In fact, let me let me answer you by asking this question: Does or do these people think that William Ruto, if at all, he's a target man, mm. that he will sit back and see uh, government coming at him? And he has no doubt on yeah. people close to the president. Yeah, I and, mean, and that is actually housed in the treasury. It is absolutely, and because we know that the DPP yeah. and the DCI were shouting at Ratich, "We're coming for you," yeah. as they, you know, running to him very slowly. So yes. all that time, he yes. had he had a lot of time to pick up quite a bit of dirt. Absolutely, so he could he could see the that this was coming his way. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure if. William Ruto is steps ahead of people. I mean, in my view, yes. mm -hmm. he sees steps coming, and and and, and he takes he takes action yeah. to prevent him. And so, the final through. angle that I'd want us to just look at very quickly yeah. is what is the likelihood that mm. these arrests are going to even end in any kind of conviction? Oh, because if we take NYS <laughs> based on history, yeah. law. But if the intention does not necessarily is is not generated at the office of the DPP and it has a higher owner then yeah. they may be, they may be seen to their conclusion because if there is a political end to it yeah. and if the arrests are indeed going to escalate yes. then they would want to see it to I completely its disagree because if end. NYS2 is anything to go by <laughs> how many people were arrested about 40 and before they even get to court no. we're 20 down, we're down to one In fact, 20 are removed because of lack of evidence but this is exactly what i'm saying that this is a different situation that we can't really rely on history we have not had a cabinet secretary arrested before, mm -hmm. and here we are. Mathematical trends. Exactly. Uh, Haji takes 50, uh, 140 people mm -hmm. to the high court. He probably was asking for an SGR to take them because they're so many. <laughs> then there was a linear progression uh, yes. from an SGR to a matatu to, to a matatu. now there's one in a boda boda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he says no insufficient evidence, I'm withdrawing uh, half of the exactly. cases. Exactly. So and and time, precisely because yeah. the evidence that they brought was yes. insufficient. It was insufficient. And, the more, and you call this in law the fruit of the poisonous tree. So yeah. If you poison the tree, the yes. fruit that you're going to get at the end will be poisoned. poisoned. Yeah. So if you're taking 28 people this time, you're very much likely to withdraw 14, mm -hmm. going by trends. I mean, this is an intriguing saga and we can only wait and see mm -hmm. and continue analyzing and now we'll move on to the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country and just like the headlines we have a three-part criteria that we use to break them down for you we ask ourselves mm -hmm. is the cartoon humorous or is it dry is it satirical or is it pessimistic and finally mm -hmm. is the cartoon effective yeah. or is it lazy yes. Yes. I think just instantly we're going to toss the just, daily nation yes, we can direct our audience to Twitter also, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think Gado is also on holiday, Gado but this, this, this one you can mention. Um, Kai Kacha of Uru Kenyatta, mm -hmm. yeah, he's, uh, he has read things on his eyes, lips, I think he's bones. blushing in excitement. He, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and next to him is Raila Odinga, mm -hmm. and they are Skyping of Vladimir Putin, strongman of Russia, right? And uh, he says, of Putin on, on Skype, he says, you can learn from Russia. Mr. Odinga becomes president and you, Uhuru, becomes prime minister. Mm. De, de facto, sir. Yeah. Mm. And, and yeah, uh, that's in reference to the methods that yeah. Putin has used to stay in power for all this time. He yeah. becomes the uh, DP, or rather the vice president, absolutely. the president, and back and forth. Absolutely. I don't know how think, topical this is. Sometimes I think Gado has it's, a cupboard full of cartoons yeah. and he mm -hmm. removes them when he has an off day. It's yeah. repeated, right? Ozon. Ozon. Caricature of uh, <laughs> third way. What is called third way what? <laughs> Force, movement, dog, mumble, what? I think third way highway. <laughs> uh, uh, the push for a court. referendum gets rolling. Mm. Uh, yes, so court is pushing his Punguza uh, Mzigo, a very fat pig. Inflated, mm -hmm. yes. It's inflated, they can barely stand. And uh, the push for, yeah. uh, but I mean, give it to him. It's getting so much traction. It is but most definitely, but I still think we I, toss. I don't think it's a good cartoon. The cartoons are not inspiring. So we'll move on mm. to our next segment. What is the final thought? And now our final thought, inspired by a book entitled "Weapons of Math Destruction" by Kathy <coughs> O'Neill. Hope mm. I said it right. Yes. <laughs> 
It's yes. a very simple name, it is. But not all nails. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'll say that again clearly because it's a play yes. on weapons of, of mass, mass destruction. destruction. So the book is entitled Weapons of Math Destruction. Mm. Yes, written by Kathy O'Neill in yeah. 2016, I believe. Yeah. Mm. So O'Neill is a mathematician <laughs> and she received her PhD from Harvard University in mm. mathematics and then later went to teach at MIT and Bernard College. Yeah. She later moved into the private sector mm. where she worked in finance and yeah. trading, yeah. but she left when she became unhappy with the practices used. She yeah. saw the atrocities that went on behind the scenes in the finance industry. Yeah. And it is with that knowledge yeah. that she decided to write this book. Mm. Yes. So big data really caught on, I'd say, in 2015, 2016. Yeah. And it is most praised in its potential mm. to use data to improve lives, yes. right? Yeah. So it's able to anticipate, we've talked about this, it yes. anticipates your needs before you even know what that need is. Yeah. But. Yeah. O'Neill presents a very important perspective that needs to be considered, and she yeah. takes the flip side. Yes. So where um, traditionally big data has been seen as this thing that is very helpful, it's going to take us into the new frontiers and how we make decisions, mm. she says that we need to look at the drawbacks in what it's able to do. Yes. And that is why she calls these practices yeah. weapons of math destruction. Yes. So she defines them as mathematical models mm. or algorithms. Mm. An algorithm, you remember, is a set of questions to solve a very well-defined problem. Yes. Yes. Also known as, it could also be a recipe. Yes. So when you learn how to cook ugali and you're told to do X, Y, Z, that yeah. is a recipe. You're trying to solve the problem of how to make ugali. Yes. 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 The definite method. Yeah. Mm. So these weapons of math destruction mm. are mathematical models or algorithms yeah. that quantify or calculate important traits. Yes. So here she gives the examples of creditworthiness. Yes. Are you able to get a loan? Yeah. How much will you pay for your insurance? Yeah. Um, are you qualified to be a teacher or should you keep being a teacher? Yeah. Uh, should you get this job? So she yes. uses them to explain lots of things. Yeah. Yeah. But she says that they often reinforce inequality mm. or enforce manipulation of the person on the other side, the yes. receiving end of this algorithm. Yes. Um, and she says that a big selling point in big data mm. and algorithms is the assumption that they will be objective in decision making, yeah. that yeah. we can trust the algorithm to just do what we need it to do and it Absolutely. will always be objective. Yes. But I don't think that's actually true. I, I, it's it's I, I, not, and I think she demonstrates that very well yes. in, in the book. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as Tujay was saying, algorithms were created because they can do what human beings cannot yeah. do. We mm. cannot analyze that scale of, dat of yeah. data mm -hmm. or, or data. Mm. We, we cannot make decisions based on so many variables, so that mm. is what they're created to do for us. Yeah. Mm. However, they are created by human beings. Yes. yes. So even um, as the creator is putting the algorithm together, they inject their biasness, mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. they inject um, whatever arbitrary intentions that they have yeah. and, and put it in the algorithm. Yes. Yes. And so the algorithm is put out in the world and mm. as um, innocent bystanders who participate in it, yeah. Facebook and etc., um, we we get stereotypes perpetuated. Yes, yes. absolutely. Mm -hmm. The book um, is very American. I mean, all the examples yeah. that she gives in the book are about the American police force and mm -hmm. whatnot. I'm having yeah. a conversation earlier and yeah. thinking, how is it applicable here? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and I was thinking, you know, we, ha we have a lot of... Um, cabinet secretaries who want to be the best performing <laughs> soon uh, or, 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 or top yeah. government of so, so. will be like now yeah. we are going to apply algori algorithms in the police force yes. to determine which are the crime hotspots in Kenya yes. yeah. and then what happens thereafter we find that um, let's say for example <coughs> it's um, central Kenya that has been identified mm -hmm. then they increase the police force mm -hmm. to a population ratio in yeah. central Kenya, yeah. Yeah. then it becomes a tribal thing. Yes. You know, those are the kind of bias, biasness and stereotypes that yeah. are perpetuated by um, mm. algorithms. Yeah, you know, she, uh, it's, it's, I'm glad you say that because there are three things she says that mix this, I, I, I can't say it, algorithms. Algorithms, there you go. <laughs> Al algorithms, very yeah. dangerous, mm. right? The first is they are, they are very opaque, this is mm. opaqueness. Second is skill, and third is impact. And then she gives the example of 2008 yeah. and, uh, and, and the, the, the global financial, financial crisis. Mm -hmm. And she says that uh, the mortgages, subprime mortgages, were not WMDs, or not weapons of mass destruction, uh, destruction as such, right? They're just instruments for banks and insurance companies to make money. Mm -hmm. But what made uh, GFC WMDs was the fact that some of these mortgages were being given to people who would not be able to afford them. Yeah. yeah. 
right? Now, you're playing with data to people who are not credit worthy, mm -hmm. but it is not for their, for their benefit. For their benefit, It yeah. is for the benefit of corporations making capital. And I think maybe it. just to clarify those three things that you said, the mm. three things that she called the characteristics of a weapon of mass destruction. Mm. So she talks about it being opaque. Mm. And in reference to it being opaque, mm. I will bring back a concept that we introduced a couple of months ago, the yes. concept of a black box that is used yeah. in um, engineering. No, actually, in engineering and ah. economics and in data science. Yeah. So a black box is a situation whereby mm. you have the input mm. that is put into a black box, yeah. something happens, yes. and you get the output. Yeah. So what she talks about, the opaqueness, is what happens in the black box. Oh, mm. yes. It's the way we explain when a child tries mm. to open a door. Yeah. He put his hand on the handle, yeah. and he knows that there's something happening in between the handle there's, and the door. There's a mechanism. There's a mechanism doesn't inside, but he doesn't is. know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So she refers to this opaqueness as uh, being part of the weapons of math destruction, yes. precisely because the consumer doesn't know how the decision was arrived at. Oh, yeah. yes. And she says that it should not happen that way. Yeah. In data science and data analytics, the consumers need to be aware of mm -hmm. what is creating the yes. input to yes. create yeah, the output. Yeah, but this opaqueness is really integrated into the cre the use of data, isn't yes. it? Absolutely. They don't <coughs> want people to know. That is how, mm -hmm. that is yes. how it works. Absolutely. Yeah. But look at it this way. Um, uh, it's, it's all about choice architects. Yeah. Um, and what what the, uh, the the example she gave about 2008 2009 mm. uh, GFC about uh, uh, people being given loans uh, that they could not afford mm -hmm. in my view you know that is what is happening in Kenya right now mm. and it's happening slowly mm -hmm. now if I was to give you an example these uh, groups the mobile lending platforms I will not name them do you people know that by the time they're giving you a loan all right, you have to allow them some form of um, allowance and access mm. for them to be able to see your messages. And messages? Your, yes, your messages. All right, to see if if you have an an, an existing loan with anyone else. Okay. Mm. All right, and now the machine, the alog, uh, algorithm, al <laughs> algorithm, mm. it calculates how much you will be able to be you, you will be given mm. by that mobile platform, depending on number one how you earn. Uh, Gender, have location, loans, location, mm. and by the way, you probably be given more money based on uh, personal expense and a business yeah. expense. And I think that but as much as it what, should work, though, I mean, and I think <laughs> as much as what you said, DM. Yeah. Yes, this is a book that's based on American experiences. Yes. but I think we can learn a lot from it. Absolutely. And I think that we can use it as a warning. If yeah. you look at in light of the Cambridge Analytica scandal, both yeah. in the U.S. and in Kenya, that we've just found out about, yeah. I think that we should read this book and learn from it. Oh, yes, I think one of absolutely. the conclusions that she makes in the book is that people need to be aware of what is going on yes. and we should not be afraid to question yes. these algorithms. Math yes. is very scary and it's very intimidating. Yes, but absolutely. that should not be a reason for you to accept a loan from absolutely. these people. Or not to scrutinize it. The, exactly. The central bank so it's governor, knowledge then. The, ce the yeah. central bank governor, I think last week, sometime last week, said be very careful because you do not know how these people reach their interest rate. Mm -hmm. If you're getting a loan of about 20,000 bob and you're paying 4,000 bob interest, yeah. they have not told you how you're going to do it. But yeah. if you go to a bank, the credit officer will, t will tell you, this is how we are going to mm. uh, draw your loan, this is how we are going to you know, appraise it. But uh, this mobile lending platform, it's a machine who, which is doing <laughs> Deciding it, for and they'll yeah. take advantage of you. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of this conversation is working towards a Netflix documentary that is coming out on Wednesday. Yes. It's called The Great Hack, yeah. and it explores a lot of what happened in this Cambridge Analytica situation, yeah. how Facebook was involved, how Russia was involved. It touches yeah. a little bit on Kenya as well. Yeah. So I think as we work towards that, we want to encourage our audience to yeah. join and watch us. Yeah, watch that with us. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, this conversation is very intriguing. Mm. And I'm a big skeptic of algorithms, but then I'm also in the middle because they're important. Do you yeah. have Huduma uh, number? I do. Mm. I do have Huduma do number. Mm. Nope. Uh, never, I do have, never, never I, but you will need to have one in December or <laughs> relocate to Uganda. Mm. <laughs> so the thing about... Um, Algorithms, just to wrap up, mm. um, I always say, mm. as human beings, we can make the most sophisticated machines, mm. and we will, yes. that can even replace us, yeah. but we can never manufacture the human soul. Mm. Yes, absolutely. This has been the winning headlines. We had uh, no winning headline, mm. but we did have a breaking story that we spoke about, mm. and we had no winning cartoons. cartoons. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening. See you tomorrow.